know what? I'm going to try to get uh, our timing back on track. So, um, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, just a lot of you have been saying, hey, that was awesome. That presentation was great. That's good information. That's what we're looking for. So, uh, I think this, uh, this next one uh, will be uh, along the same vein. That looks really, really creepy, by the way. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I talk, Paul and I were talking earlier, I said, you know, I really apologize because it's probably not the best thing to do to have anybody present after the presenter on presentations. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, Paul is going to uh, try his best to, uh, to do so. So let me tell you a little bit about Paul. So Paul Curley is a CFA, Joint Strategic Insight as a research analyst in 2008. He currently oversees educational financial planning, market data, research, events, and digital products. That's a lot of stuff and services for institutional clients. He is the primary uh, SI contact for proprietary data aggregation and analysis of 529 savings plans, prepaid plans, and ABLE accounts, and authors SI's weekly, quarterly, and annual business intelligence publications on the college savings market. He is also the editor-in-chief of the 529-e-newsletter and the 529 Insiders website for financial advisors, institutions, and the media. The website also provides marketing services for program managers. What I will tell you is, if you haven't yet subscribed to a 529 Dash, I get it every week. Yes. Every week? Yes. Every week. Is, yep. uh, every week. Uh, great information. Just little nuggets, information about, you know, just different things going on in the 529 plan space. Just good stuff to know that you, you're likely never going to use when doing a presentation, but when you get into a conversation with somebody, especially those of you who in some cases are traveling to different states, just knowing what states are doing with their 529 plans and stuff. I get all the information from, from Paul's uh, 529 dash large record. Uh, Paul oversees the content for the 529 conference and speaks frequently on topics concerning the college savings and able market at industry conferences and with major news publications and media outlets, including a lot of places. Um, and by the way, guys, I know we talked about it last night, but that's it's going to be right at Amelia Island outside of Jacksonville uh, at the end of September. So you guys may want to check that out. He's also the principal contact for SI's membership with the College Savings Foundation and College Savings Plan Network. Additionally, he's a member of the Municipal Fund Securities Advisory Group created by the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. Lastly, he conducts ad hoc custom research, <coughs> consulting, advisory, and presentations with leading program managers on market issues. So suffice it to say, this guy knows what he's talking about with regard to 529s. Uh, previously, he was at Loomis Sales, uh, working on the fixed income side. He's got an MBA from Boston College, you'll notice his tie that he's wearing, uh, where he was awarded the Ann Murphy Award for Outstanding Contribution to the Program and was accepted into the Beta Gamma Sigma Honorary Society. He received a bachelor's from Emory. Uh, he has the CFA designation. Now, some of you don't know, uh, about nine years ago, I did level one of the CFA exam. It was brutal. Uh, I mean, I probably spent, I don't know, conservatively, maybe like, I don't know, four million hours studying for this thing. <laughs> just just memorizing formulas and stuff. I passed level one and promptly decided there is no way I'm doing level two and three. Uh, it is a tough exam. You know, some of you have the CFP. CFP is like a mile wide, but not necessarily very deep. Uh, the CFA is deep, 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 deep on investments. And so it's, uh, you know, I've got some pretty uh, mad respect for anybody who's got that. Uh, Designation. He's a member of the CFA Institute uh, and CFA Society of Boston, contributed to the organization as a CFA review instructor, practice exam writer, and as a program committee organizer from 2005 to 2013. So recently moved down to Philadelphia, um, and with that, a lot of stuff, but uh, I think it's good to kind of have the background. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul to uh, amaze and entertain us and give us a great presentation. The pressure's on. It is definitely. Um, I, I went to high school with uh, B.J. Novak, who was on uh, the TV show Pugs. So when I saw that, I was following up the presentation on, on how to do presentations. I, I thought that might have been the case. So I'm happy to, happy to be here. And um, as Brock had mentioned, I'm the director of college safety research for my firm, where I oversee ABLE, uh, which is a talk for disabled folks, but also five nine college savings plans, um, savings and prepaid plans, as it relates to data, research, events, digital, and the, and the data box. <coughs> 2002 is contacting each and every state and program managed to collect the data, benchmark it, and, and here's where you know, someone stands. One of the, 
purposes of that is that if you have any questions or want to talk to anyone, I know the executive director for um, you know, Virginia 5 tonight or any, any which uh, state you're from or any questions you have, I, I can help you to connect to you to those folks. Uh, we also do research, we do annual surveys of parents, annual surveys of advisors to say, you know, what's working, what's not, what types of legislation uh, would help like you as an advisor to sell more, to help your clients more, what perhaps those product chains, um, you know, marketing, distribution, what, what is it that can help you have the conversation as it relates to uh, college financial planning and um, helping with budget financial plans or whatever it may be. On the event side, for the past six years, we've been uh, running the, the Fly Time Conference. You know, uh, Brock is going to be presenting there um, as well. I'm very happy to have him. Thank you for the introduction and um, invitation for me to present here today. And also for Brock, I look forward to seeing you next, next uh, month as well. Um, and last but not least, within our, our digital, we do a number of newsletters and blogs and things like that to help really get the word out about um, you know, college financial planning. And um, you know, what, what, one thing that kind of jumps to our mind is got college financial planning, got mail campaign. I'm really just here to help uh, provide great information and be a resource to you. Do you have like you know a lot of advisors, advisors will say, do you have a good piece on X or estate planning or financial aid? I do, and I have a number of speakers that can you know speak to different topics. Or if you have any questions, happy to introduce to you in my, in my number. Um, because I did that five tonight conference, for example, that Monday is, is eight hours of eight different speakers talking about all the different things about uh, financial planning. Uh, as I started to, to do more digital, what I heard more and more was, was getting the question of, hey, Paul, like eight hours of luck, can you come in and give a, a condensed presentation on all the different things? And I was like, well, that's kind of tough, but let me try. And, and I think one of the greatest things about that presenter um, before me had, had, had said, you know, the value of you know presenting and proving your presentation, I, I, I find that I have improved over time. Uh, I used to have stage fright when, when, our, um, when our CEO you know, called me in the office and said, hey, we bought some for college.com conference, um, and you're going to run it. Like, and then I tell him, like, like, you know I have, I have stage fright, right? <laughs> so um, this is uh, me actually being, being active. It's great to get the training like the last one and, and you know, to, like, help, help me train as well um, on, on how, how to present. So, so thank you so much for the opportunity. And one thing, um, you're talking about stories, and it's kind of interesting that the last one we had was, um, I, I noticed that there, was, that there was one gentleman from um, New Hampshire, actually, uh, Brian Lucci, that from New Hampshire? I just saw him on the list here. He's not here. He's not here. But I, has anyone been to uh, Kenny Bunkport Bay, especially in the summertime? Where? Uh, uh, Kenny Bunkport Bay? Um, for, those, for those of you who have, you can definitely, you know, if you see the nodding, it's a great, idyllic, very picturesque kind of Very, it's, it's as perfect as, as a, a family place to go visit in the summertime. But the weather is great. You know, the, you know, the waves curl. It's sunny. It's beautiful. The waves aren't too bad, so I, I, I took my uh, five and three year old there. Didn't have to worry about you know, the waves not going over. Um, you go, you know, you go to the, um, you know, the mini stores. And you have the ice cream. You have the candy. It's just like this picturesque kind of scene. Um, and what are, you, what are you doing there? I mean, what, you know, when I read the, the, the you know, top 100 uh, advisors, you know, across the nation and things like that, and they, they do the interviews of, of the advisors in Maine, what, what, did they, what, did they, what did they talk about? Taking their clients out for lobster. You know, so we, we went out to lobsters, you know, to get lobster with the family uh, at the clam shop. Jack is, is there. Um, and then this very perfect, picturesque kind of scene. This is the way life should be, the ideal of life. I mean, what, and what do I see it, as I kind of go to pay for that lobster in beer, of course, is but the sign, four years of college, a lifetime of debt. And I didn't really think that much of it. I was like, oh yeah, that's what happens in life. That is the way life is, and is a part of this idyllic scene, because that's the way the world is. But it got me thinking, you know, having, you know, covered you know, college financial planning before I was married and had kids or didn't really understood the, the burden, and, and it really kind of struck me. That's, th this needs to change. This this conversation, this kind of tone, this is sort of the way of life of taking this this on this you know student loan debt you know, for a lifetime. That needs to change. I think that's part of that's part of you know why I'm here. I'm not getting compensated today to thank you, Brock, but um, and, you know, and that's part of the, the way that, that I, I believe in you, Brock, and I believe in this in this room. You know has you know has the opportunity to to make the world a better place, and that's why I'm here. Uh, you know, typically when I present, I present from the more uh, institutional clients, and in many ways, I, I teach um, product specialists how to be special. You know, in many ways, and 
And one of the things that, that comes to mind is, is this Malcolm Gladwell five-year rule. I, I, I assume a lot of people have heard it. And, but I, I, just as a you know, show of hands, just so I kind of understand the room and, and hear the presentation a little bit more, how many have been covering 529s for less than five years? Just a quick show of hands. Okay. And for um, that five to 10 years? Yeah. And for that um, more than 10 years? And then as a quick side note, I always love it when the media calls me and says, can you send me data on 529s for the past 30 years? And it's like, well, <laughs> how long have you been writing about 529s? Do they have been on the ground for 20 years? So, the, so for those that have been covering for, for over 10, then you know, congrats and uh, kudos to you. But yeah, the, um, you know, in many ways, it's that Malcolm Gladwell, you know, you know, just you know, focusing on, on college financial planning for that more than five years, you know, just focusing on it. Um, you know, The Good Degrees is one of those great books that, that I, you know, love, just sort of like building that habit and, and just, you know, moving forward. And, and Charles Darwin, one of those great books that I kind of find interesting is that, you know, it's, it's focusing on, on those habits and micro habits that will create your success. But in many ways, I, I, you know, there's a quote in the book that basically says, like, it's the habits that make sure you live and, sur you know, survive. You know, it's just, you know, a life and death kind of conversation. So it's a little bit more serious, you know, with our own, but uh, find, your, find your why, find your how, and if you believe in, in your why, that will get you to five years to make you, um, you know, that, that outlying uh, specialist. Just my two thoughts. So in, in a lot of those slides, your thoughts become your words, your words become your, your actions, and so on and forth, so forth. I think that's one of those, those great, you know, kind of, um, you know, quotes and, and you know, just focusing on our habits will, will help us get to where we need to be. Um, I very much believe in, in this, this storyline of just helping, you know, needing to change um, you know, the, the way the world is. And within a, a you know, five times are in a very comparative sense of very small products. We do have a chance to go go to the hill and talk, talk to the powers that be. Uh, a lot of the data that, that I do provide is, you know, is used by, you know, so, uh, Senate and, and Congress. When Obama um, you know, tried to change the rules around 529s, around who uses 529 in demographics, it was my data that floated through the floor and it was, it was used on, on the floor. So um, you know, it's a great, great um, you know, opportunity. But it's just pretty much the um, you know, growth mentality. You know, what we do is important you know, for education. It, it, it helps us you know, to grow and, and to be more. Um, maybe people see education as, as that good way to um, you know, getting, getting out of wherever, whatever situation that they are in and, and going to a better place. So, but today it's very much you know, focusing on the, on the fundamentals. When we, when we talk about athletes and, and what they do, it's, it's very much about the, the fundamentals. Um, you know, they, they do it a whole lot faster. Like one year at the 529 conference, we actually you know, bumped into this um, new guy who were, you know, actually played for the, the uh, Bills at the time and had him you know, come in and present and talk and we were just talking about the fundamentals. Uh, granted, he was six foot eight, and, and um, <laughs> so, it, so it was a little, you know, had a little bit, you know, different of a start, starting spot. I, I guess I would be much more amygdala size, right? But um, you know, but I, I, I think, um, and I, you know, and I, I think it's another example of, you know, just um, you know, really being passionate about about who you, uh, you know, what you do, and you know, advancing the industry. Because for me, I'm a uh, Patriots fan. I'm sorry. But you know, to, to, you know, invite someone from the bills to be up on stage. You know, it's a, I thought it was you know a good way to work across party lines. So for the, the landscape, right, I think the um, the holistic you know, college financial planning you know story is, is definitely the first step in, in the happening conversation. And the more that clients you know see that college financial planning is part of a holistic um, approach to college financial planning, all the better. You know, generally speaking, in that idea of going on and financial advisors is trying to survey of advisors and then two other ones coming from the survey of um, you know um, you know parents is, is coming from our survey of parents but you know by and by and large you know I, I think that there's the conversation or you know it's only been more recently I think someone had mentioned about you know you know planning for college and retirement together um, because more and more of what we've been seeing and, and, and definitely in the past you know uh, one year was, was probably that you know how you know the lack of college financial planning is having a, a, a negative effect on, on retirement. Um, but to that extent, the clients under, understand you know that you know you, you plan for college. It's one last one less barrier to that storyline on retirement planning. All the better, and then we're likely to be able to save and save efficiently. So I, I think you know what, one thing that is is intriguing is, is two um, you know, data points, and this is why. One of the slides that's probably the most 
most relevant to the storyline that, that, you know, for, for your position, but also for, for <coughs> Green Rock and his storyline as well. Um, but, you know, there's probably like two, two, two points. Like one is that having the college financial planning conversation will help you to retain your, your, your clients and your, your book of business, but your, your client base. Um, and that's only becoming, you know, more and more so. That, that has historically been, um, you know, one of the most, you know, more leading cases for doing the college financial planning and, and using five clients. Um, you know, you, you, you have a client, they want to do college. I've had, met with a number of advisors who actually said, like, hey, Paul, can you do the college financial planning for me so I can focus on my core book of business? It's like, like, no, and you should be doing it yourself so that you don't lose that portion to another advisor who will come in and say, like, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, you know, is your client taking care of the college financial planning story? Because truth be told, um, you know, it, or, or I guess re reversing the, the line of conversation to like, like growing the book of business, you know, how, what, what percent of your clients are, are fully saving for college happily? You know, very, a very, there's a very low savings rate and a very low you know, savings, saving efficiently. So to a greater or lesser extent, when you say like, you know, you be a client, you say, are, you know, are you saving for college? No. It's like, all right, what's your game plan? Let me help. I was going to say, I think what I see a lot, and I met somebody last week, I was like, this person's in good shape for college and retirement. I never realized how rare that was. Mm -hmm. Like, usually parents are in good shape for retirement have nothing for college, so they max out retirement plans, or they spend too much money on college and they're taking out home equity lines of credit, home paid loans, you name it. Uh, and so there's very few things that we need how to balance both yeah. retirement and good college. Yeah. And so oftentimes I find myself telling them they need to focus more on retirement because there are other ways to fund college besides your own. Yeah, it, it is very interesting. There's, um, you know, of that high income, high asset client base, you know, in our in our survey data, we do see the, it's like, oh, we don't save for college, and then you dig deeper into the why are we saving for college, like, oh, it's fully funded. I'm like, well, <laughs> can't really argue with that, but yeah, it definitely takes place. This is, um, uh,
So to the extent that you know one is you know saving for for five to nine, in addition to you know um, you know uh, college and, and retirement together, that makes you know, much better planning sense. So um, that that was a an intriguing one. That was it was not for uh, Minnesota with, with X Y planning on digital. Yeah. Are you saying that you're seeing people? Uh, frequently sort of raid their 401k to be able to pay for college, right? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. And in, in many, uh, in many times, intentionally saving in the 401k to, to, um, you take that. And the, the mindset is I can take a loan against my 401k because I, I borrow it at 3%. And, and one of the, it's one of the things we talk about in our presentation is how, you know, people don't understand the fact that you got to pay it back. You're paying it back with after tax dollars. And then ultimately, the money's going to grow, and on the back end, you pull it out and you pay ordinary income tax all over again. Right. The opportunity cost. Right. So just sort of yeah, the opportunity cost, the inefficiency of that type of a strategy. Do you have any statistics around that? Yep. Yeah. There's a there's oh, a lot yeah. of the stats like for example, <laughs> there's some um, you know on the frequency, but also the, the sizing of that taking place. But yeah, it's it, it's it's an issue that we've been you know, focusing on and covering more, more and more. That's great. Thank you. Um, so the, the, this jumps into more, much more like the, the landscape side of the presentation, you know, broadly speaking. And, and, and Brock, please feel free to, to use this, this data set I sent to our point deck. And if anyone wants to use the slides for, for your own, um, you know, use, you know, please feel free as well. But you know, broadly speaking, that you know, the, the higher the level of education, the higher level of income, and each additional layer of education is uh, driving higher and higher levels of income. Even going from just a high school degree to some college, not even graduating, for those that drop out, you know, they're getting more and more for income, which is, which is part of the, the why um, why go to college. And, and the other intriguing thing is is also that the, the more education, you're also getting like lower and lo lower levels of unemployment. So you're having that you know, benefit of higher income, lower unemployment rates, and, and together, you know, more social stability.
you know, for my own, my son, the three-year-old son, is roughly that age or so. Um, but of course, that's, that's maybe a little bit too much of the scare factor, right? You know, there's a number of ways to kind of tackle it, but that's, that's sort of the, the big number of estimate that, that we come up with. Do you, do you protect they're going to be for being second in the bowl this year?
I think I this news article that was like, you know, there's this article about student loan debt um, story and the break below it was a sinkhole. So it was just sort of like the parallel of the two, you know, student loan debt and, and sinkholes taking place. And it was just sort of um, an interesting story.